Welcome. My name is Leo Monahan. I'm a designer, illustrator, but primarily a paper sculptor. The paper sculpture came reasonably early in my career and was as an illustrator for 50 years. And since that 50 years went by and during part of it, I became a fine artist for gallery artists. This ex exhibition is the largest exhibition of my work that I've ever had and will very likely be the last big show that I will make because I worked for six or seven months on this and the results, I think, are my best. So we can walk around and take a look at things and I'll explain how paper sculpture is made. It uh, primarily starts all this white paper so everything colored you see in here has been painted from white paper and there are a lot of white paper sculptures in here and we can talk about them as well. Exhibition here with uh, compositions of color, which is the title of the show. And the color wheels are wheels that I made when I was teaching uh, at CalArts at Disney School and started doing these for the students to tell them that they could have fun with color and still learn very technical aspects of color. So these are based on the Bauhaus 12-tone color system. And so these two color wheels are indicative of maybe 50 color wheels I've done over the past These two pieces. The first one is a color wheel of rhinos, very highly designed indication using six colors, which are the six secondaries. And to look at the one below, it, again, I've used the color wheel, but this is somewhere over the rainbow. So it's the application of color to a, um, a series of guitars. I've done, I think, almost 40 guitars. And this is Eric Clapton, somewhere over the rainbow. Uh, Eric Clapton uh, ends every, every concert with somewhere over the rainbow. And it's the bluebirds fly so, you know, bluebirds sing and bluebirds fly. So I use symbols, uh, never realism, always symbols in the work. These three uh, guitars with the fire come from Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. So every guitar in here is based on a song. These guitars are based on uh, the, the word fire in famous songs. On the left, you'll find Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. This is Great Balls of Fire by Buddy Holly. And that's Light My Fire by Jose Feliciano. So I've used the symbol of fire in many of these guitars. The guitars are all based on a famous song and a, and a well-known guitarist or singer, and sometimes a composer. The Carousel Horse is an example of paper sculpture in white. And white is the pure aspect of paper sculpture because it depends completely on lighting and shadows. Uh, in this case, I'm in the shadow game. And in most of my things, I am playing with shadows. The background is also paper sculpture, but starting to use some of the sprayed color. I use almost airbrush on everything. The, the shapes have been scored and, and formed. Uh, formed in the round, formed um, in many ways, mostly with scoring, so you get dark and light, and f flat shapes that vary in and out. So it's a artistic but technical I was art. I to do uh, some orchids for uh, the Orchid Society. And I decided not to do realistic orchids because these were for experts and they would pick it apart. So I, des I made several orchids I made several orchids that uh, were based on movements in art. This is an Art Deco orchid. I did Art Nouveau. I did other de decorative uh, orchids. And that way, they were completely accepted but not picked apart because there was nothing realistic about them. All symbolism. The uh, fish come from an old song from I think the 30s and 40s uh, by the Andrews sisters about itty bitty fishes, three itty bitty fishes in an itty bitty pool. So I picked these well-known 
but almost ancient songs. I think this is probably from the 40s. And so I've got the guitar, an indication of the three fish, and then other fish sort of swimming through the guitar. The one above is of a frog, and it's from the song, Froggy went according, and he did ride, ha ha. So uh, that's Three Dog Night saying that. And also this, that one, and this, Jeremiah was a bullfrog, is the Three Dog Night sculpture. So this is for several different songs, but primarily it is Jeremiah was a bullfrog, and he was a friend of mine. You know, I had to learn, I had to learn the lyrics to a lot of these songs. But having grown up during those years, I already knew most of these lyrics. The flying swan is an example of the use of various textures in paper. One is cutting all the way through, making the pattern of bushes in the back. One is scoring every other side almost like a fan, and that catches light top and bottom. So I establish a lot of, uh, of my shadow system. The swan itself is uh, layered shapes and the use of rounding. So the neck is round, the head is round, uh, the background is a textured paper. So I have different textures, different, uh, uh, the use of different uh, systems to catch the light in, a, in variation with different kinds of repetition. Again, this is a, another rhino uh, system that I designed. When I was teaching, uh, the students were complaining about being very uh, complex in their color wheels, and I started bringing them in and saying, you can actually have fun doing this. You don't have to be doing just straight color wheels. The system of painting in this is very similar to the guitar in this one, and this is just a purple skull, and it's uh, more or less a home on the range kind of song, and uh, again, strictly symbols, strictly symbols, and also the use of color. The purple color in the back reflects on the skull and becomes part of the skull. So there's a variation in the use of color to establish depth because these things are quite shallow. It's the use of color and uh, light to establish depth. Again, the use of fan shapes, cutting or scoring every other side to give me this very strong shadow business and with color, then the, the fish are each one exactly the same uh, because it was a fin formation. So these are similar to uh, a real fish, but these are primarily my fish. Uh, they, they exist in my world. These two guitars are based on the theme of Christmas, and there must be a thousand songs that have Christmas or seasonal that season in their, in, their, in their writing of the songs. For example, this is White Christmas by Bing Crosby, and this is Christmas Bells by uh, Perry Como. Now these were not guitarists, but they were iconic songs uh, sung by iconic singers. You know, every Christmas, you know, Bing Crosby has been gone years and years and years, but every Christmas, he comes back as the singer of White Christmas and Perry Como of Christmas Bells. It's interesting to establish what kind of a symbol. Well, the symbol is the wreath. So it's a decorative wreath. This example is Winter Flies In, and it's a winged horse and establish certain symbols, which is the autumn leaves and the horses flying in for, for winter. So it's winter flies in, and 
the same techniques, rounding, scoring, so you get uh, harsh shadows, very soft shadows, and again, the wings themselves and the horse are all made of, of layering paper. And the only color is the background color. As you can see by the subject matter, a lot of my work depends on uh, how I feel at the time about a certain subject. And I do boats because I love the water. I love the impression of things of old boats. I can make things look very old and, and use a symbol of very rough paper to indicate a boat without actually having to make a boat. The uh, large boat here is called Big Red because of the, uh, the red, all the reds without in there, and it's for rent. So I use an aspect of humor, and in some cases I use, this is a heavy paper, almost a mat board, and the indications of the, of the metal is cardboard. And because, you know, paper is paper. Makes no difference what kind of paper I use. I use paper for the effect. People have asked me uh, a lot about my backgrounds. They're hand painted, of course, but, but there's a lot of texture in this big red, and that is German wallpaper. Paper is paper, and I take advantage of every bit. Now, this fish here is a Rocky Mountain bighorn bass. Well, of course, there are no such thing as a Rocky Mountain bighorn bass, but in my weird world, I always say that there, there are a few of them left. They're not extinct completely, but uh, this is my use of symbols, like the, uh, the horns, the twisted horns from a Rocky Mountain uh, sheep, but this is uh, the bass. Oddly enough, this bass is just one piece of paper with a fin and the, and the horns. This is, the texture is all hand cut, Everything is cut with a knife. Uh, I don't use any machines of any kind. I draw with an exacto knife uh, much better than I, than I draw with a pencil. I draw with a knife because the knife is very exacting, exacting, exacto. These three pieces are examples of pure abstract thinking. I assemble shapes without ever cutting them just exactly for that piece of work. and. It's an exercise in uh, the placement of paper, the placement of symbols, the, the uh, butterflies, the, the feathers, the flowers, but they make just an abstract statement. And then moving over to these, even though there's a subject matter in these, this is leaves with the sun, uh, or autumn, autumn leaves, uh, it is also an abstract use of symbols and color and is the thinking, the thinking is basically the same as the abstracts because these are basically abstracts but they symbolize certain things like the feathers in the red sun. The, um, I grew up in the Black Hills of South Dakota and I had a mentor named Ben Black Elk uh, who, when I was a little boy, 8, 10, 12 years old, uh, he, he posed at Mount Rushmore and he set up his teepee in our, in our backyard uh, every spring and I helped him fill it full of sage and he told me about the culture of the Sioux on the reservation and so my feathers are cut as symbols of that time, of that era, of that culture. Now there are a lot of Indian based ideas here but they are never copies because that's not my culture, but my, my life as a boy with, the, my life as a boy with the, uh, with Ben and the Sioux, uh, it, that's my culture, but not a copy of anything, ever. This group is based on, my being mentored by Ben Black Elk, is based on the uh, bundles, the medicine bundles. Um, my medicine bundles were not hidden my medicine bundles are, this is my childhood, this is everything I grew up with. The bison, 
which we had hundreds of bison uh, in the in the park in, in South Dakota, and I lived in this little town, little mining town called Keystone, and it. Uh, I looked up at, and I could see Mount Rushmore from my bedroom, and Ben's teepee was always in the backyard. So these are all in, indicative of that kind of thinking of the symbolism, both in the guitars that I've done and in the bundles that I've done. Uh, this is Good Fortune Bundle. This is a, a Four Seasons Bundle. So I named them, but they're named strictly because of as I was doing them, I was thinking about those times when I was a young child. So this bundle is, all, you know, most of the elements of my childhood. I saw horns and antlers and uh, different kind of weaving, uh, different feather ideas, uh, different color ideas, uh, antelope, bison, plant ideas. These were all things from my childhood in the Black Hills uh, when I was a little boy and uh, up until I was a, a young adult and uh, was, in, was suddenly required to attend a war. I'm just going to indicate similarities and ideas as we walk by these. This is the song Cherokee. This is Home on the Range by Gene Autry. So I'm using the same ideas as in my, in my bundles, like this bundle is called a summer bundle. Why a summer bundle? That's just how I felt at the time. Uh, there is no realism. There is always uh, symbolism. Just what 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 indicates uh, uh, subject matter? Just by shape and content. We go here. This is uh, autumn leaves again, and uh, uh, this is a face from the past. This is using very rough collage techniques. Again, horns, antlers, the face. What makes this face? Those funny teeth. And in a piece like this, there are leaves, there are feathers, there are uh, indications of plants. Uh, again, le different leaves. And almost a shield idea. And uh, it's a, a summer bundle basically because of the weaving and, the, uh, and the, the leaf ideas. This is a twisted horn, twisted horn medicine bundle. Again, the ideas are, are very similar uh, because this is what I was thinking when I was a child and uh, coming again to uh, things that are, that are iconic. Uh, this is the uh, antelope icon. And it's the, the symbol of leaves in the autumn, all the color, and the icon coming out of a bundle. Uh, that the bundle is the uh, uh, antelope, uh, antelope uh, horns. And uh, oddly enough, there are a lot of I've got a lot of deer and, and elk ideas, but there's a difference between horns and antlers. Again, another summer bundle, shield ideas, leaves, texture ideas, color. Uh, the use of uh, different techniques to color with, uh, spraying, uh, splattering. Um, uh, the idea of the background is many layers of color before I accepted it as, a, as an idea to stage these events on. And I call them events. That's an event, a graphic event. Now, when I was teaching, I used all these terms. Uh, I'm basically a Bauhaus teacher. Uh, the Bauhaus started in 1919. And when I was born in 1933, they closed it. For the last 100 years, it has been the biggest influence on design in the world is the Bauhaus basic system. Uh, and I taught the Bauhaus first course. Everybody who went in the Bauhaus had to take the preliminary course from Johannes Itten. And I teach that and I've taught it for since I left art school in 1958. Ideas 
which are food ideas and uh, uh, shapes that indicate different uh, uh, pots and, and skillets and different things. And, into, and back into the, into the uh, guitars, this is jazz. It's called Rock Lobster. And it was a uh, famous jazz piece. And the, I take advantage of the color system of this very intense red lobster on a lilac background. And it just almost vibrates. This is a bass guitar. And that's the red chili peppers, or the red hot chili peppers. This is a famous bassist named Flea. And uh, so I used the shape of the guitar. And it's an unusual shape of bass guitar. And then the chili peppers. Strictly the relation of symbols. I've done a lot of butterflies. And the butterflies, my, my system of butterflies is based on the fact that I had a, I was in a show and I had a quite a large piece of sculpture and there was a small butterfly in it. And several people came up during the show and said, I really like that. And I said, well, you know, it's autumn. If you go out in the forest, you'll find these beautiful leaves. And if you look closely, you'll find butterfly bones. And they said, really? I said, no, don't go out there. You'll hurt yourself if you step in a hole. So I did a whole show based on my ideas of what a butterfly skeleton or butterfly bones would be. And I compared the colors with the colors of uh, the plants that would be around butterflies. Uh, I don't know how many of these I did, probably 20 or 30 butterfly ideas. Uh, when I get locked in on a, on a theme, uh, as you can see, my, my guitars, I take that theme and just run with it until, until it just drives me out, practically. Uh, here's another butterfly. And this is a blue time of day. And it's the autumn leaves that you find in the forest and then the butterfly bones. Then I take the butterfly idea into the white paper sculpture again. This is a bundle from Ben Black Belt, the ideas. And there are the butterfly shapes. This is a butterfly magic. This is a, a mason jar. Everybody knows what a mason jar is, but it very seldom do they preserve butterflies. This is preserving butterflies. And I've done preserving October and preserving a lot. Another, again, this was a theme that I did a whole group. More butterflies. These are butterflies, and the decorative ideas are hands. This is, a, again, related to the Rocky Mountain bighorn bass. This is a Rocky Mountain bighorn butterfly. In my world, they still exist. Again, uh, I don't know how many of these I made because I get, I get not stuck on an idea, but I want to take it as far as I can go. And this is mainly ideas in different color of the butterflies. And this is a butterfly before the fall, before the autumn. And so it's strictly a decorative idea with actually shapes that come off of the Japanese kimono, kimonos. And much of my work is, uh, is based on Japanese art. I was uh, in the Navy during the Korean War and spent a lot of time in, in Japan. I was even in the occupation for a while and, until the occupation ended. And so this is just decorative ideas, but from a Japanese kimono. Again, here we are again, butterfly bones, different ideas. Autumn leaves again, autumn colors, and the body of the butterfly is based on autumn leaves again. And don't go there. There's no, there's no butterflies, no butterflies again. And this is "You Are My Sunshine," written by Jimmy, Jimmy D Davis and Charles Mitchell. Well, Jimmy Davis was the governor of Louisiana twice. I was in Germany in a uh, beer garden at night, beautiful, warm, 
and a group of men came and sat down to, at a table near us and they started singing. They were a choral group who had just come from a, a, uh, either a presentation or, a, or a, a practice. And they heard us talking in English and they said, where are you from? Almost everybody in Germany speaks English to a degree. And I said, from uh, California. And they said, sing us an American song. I said, okay, I will sing you the most American song. And I sang, you are my sunshine. And oddly enough, most of them knew the words. This is Blown in the Wind by, uh, by Bob Dylan. Uh, this is Joe Pass, famous guitarist. Uh, Joe Pass, uh, I knew him when he was quite young, uh, in the early 60s. I volunteered at a, uh, a place called Synanon, which is a drug rehabilitation center, and Joe Pass also did. And so I would be talking about art and design with the, with the recovering alco uh, alcoholics and uh, drug addicts, and he would be playing this beautiful jazz. Well, he is now one of the world famous uh, jazz guitarists. And this is just indicative of what happens in your life if, if you actually volunteer to do something. And I volunteered to work with these drug addicts who were uh, mostly just out of prison. This is uh, from Carousel. June is busting out all over. I love to go to the, uh, uh, the uh, musicals, the famous musicals. That's from Carousel. This is Summertime by George Gershon, the most famous uh, American composer, George Gershwin. Here's one by Sting. Sting sang Desert Rose. Again, Eric Clapton, I shot the sheriff. I shot the sheriff. You were a sheriff, right? What? You were a sheriff. Yes. And so this is basically a, a very subtle, beautiful target with the sheriff in, the, in it because I wanted to take the advantage of, of the use of color. And for 25 years, I was a reserve deputy sheriff in Los Angeles, uh, which meant I had to go to academy, become a cop, and I worked every Tuesday night for the most part with another reserve in West Hollywood. And oddly enough, uh, I, re I designed the memorial for the sheriff's department that they still use. It has hundreds and hundreds of names on it, uh, some of them friends of mine. Over uh, the 25 years in the department, uh, I lost five friends. That's, uh, again, volunteering for something worthwhile. And uh, I still get emails from the Sheriff's Department every day on people who are advancing or people who have died. Uh, so I'm still a part of that life. This was the Pied Pipers, a famous group from the 40s called Candy. Candy, I call my sugar candy. I know it's going to be just dandy when she's mine, all mine. So I had to learn the lyrics to most of these songs, but I knew a lot of them. And here's Jimi Hendrix, the Star Spangled Banner. He sang that at Woodstock. It became, it became famous. Now, how do I indicate the Star Spangled Banner? Very difficult. I could make a, a flag or anything, but I just took 13 stars. That's the 13th. People always count this. Well, we only got 12. Well, there's 13. This is going back to my childhood again. Almost everything in here is based on my childhood in some way. In the Black Hills in South Dakota, this little town of Keystone, which was a gold rush town from the 1800s, uh, about 250 people on five miles of creek, and there were a lot of junked cars, uh, this, uh, a man came in and saw this and he said, that's a 40 Dodge. I said, really? I didn't know that. I just b made a rusty car. Old barns. And I, I'm trying to indicate that when I grew up, this was a very common sight. And it's called She's a Beauty. 
This one is Fred's pickup. Now, I don't know who Fred is. Fred was my, is my brother-in-law. So I just called this thing Fred's pickup. And uh, it's, it's the kind of a car they probably would have owned in the Black Hills uh, until it fell apart. So it's, again, just symbols of shape to indicate an old div um, devoured pickup, it devoured by the, by the sun, by the w winter, and by the rain. It's pure rust. And go on Willie Nelson on the road again. And so that, that's a, a very close relationship with the old cars because Willie Nelson is old. And so that's on the road again. And that was one of the first ones I did because it's so obvious. Uh, such a great singer, and that was his, that, that is his theme song. Here's the, uh, the last piece, and it's again a, a bundle, but it's a white wing bundle, white wing and the bundle, the purity of that culture, uh, my impressions of when I was a boy, and how what all of this these things meant to me. Uh, ben Black Elk had this house in back of ours, and the wall was filled with his uh, leather costumes and headdresses and things. It it was not a thing you looked at and enjoyed so much for the for the visual, I, I felt it. You could feel these things, you know, on the wall. It was tremendous as a 10, 11, 12-year-old boy uh, and listening to Ben talk about the life and uh, we'd be in his, in his teepee, which was full of, of uh, what a plant that makes it smell good, sage that I gathered with Ben and filled it and and he would sh tell me how the Indians shaved and uh, how they, uh, their, their, you know, how they used the, the teepee, uh, what the symbol of the, uh, of the triangle was, how, why they made it that way, how smoke went out by the, the use of uh, uh, conditioning the exit. It was a, a great part of my life. Um, that. The war I was in, the Korean War, um, there was a, uh, a young boy that uh, was at my age growing up in the in Keystone, and they had cows and horses and, and all kinds of things that they had to uh, do as, as uh, uh, work. And, and I, I had to do the same thing. We had chickens, we had pigs, so, and we had cut wood, so I had to do all those. It was chores. And everybody did them, so nobody thought it was a bad thing. But Roy, my friend, he and I both graduated from high school. That war started. We both went to Korea. I went to Korea in the Navy. He went to Korea as a Marine. The Marines got caught at the Chosen Reservoir. And the Chinese had, I, th I think, 10 divisions fighting these Marines, and they pushed them down this long road toward the coast to a place called Ham, Ham Hung, and, or Hung Nam, Hung Nam and Ham Hung. And the Navy sent all kinds of ships out there to take these Marines off. I was on one of those ships. Roy was one of those Marines. We met finally at that time. Uh, I didn't see him, but the, he was there, I was there, and uh, it, it was one of, uh, life's funny coincidences. And uh, it's all related to growing up at that time. And with those influences. I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy it. <laughs>